welcome to WebPixel Live. My name is Adam Hamlin. I'm the editor of WebPixel, and we'd like to thank Aquatica for sponsoring this episode. Aquatica do a wide range of housing, sports, accessories, arms, um, and all sorts of other things, um, and also video housings under the Amphibico brand. Please head on over to aquatica.ca, that's aquatica.ca, to check out what they do and to support them. Um, I'm happy to be joined by our regular contributor, Alex Mustard. Hi, Alex. Morning, Adam. Good did, to see did we, you. Did we catch you sleeping there? You're having a bit of a yawn uh, by the look yeah. of it. <laughs> I just had the photography chat to get me going in the morning. <laughs> Cup of coffee and, a, and an underwater photography chat. Splendid. Um, well, um, I thought, um, again, given that it's, it's um, it, we're getting going in the morning, I thought it might be worth asking you whether you've seen the review that I posted um, on the WebPixel homepage by um, Hannes Klossman and Giacomo Rossi um, about the new Scuba Lamp D Max and Retro Pro Flash. Yes, no, I did. Um, I saw that straight away. Exactly the sort of thing that that I love. Um, um, and actually, I got straight online and was sharing it as well because um, I think that we are often a little bit deprived as underwater photographers to get access to really thorough reviews. So the first thing I'd say is both to, to Hans and, and to Giacomo, you know, really, you know, bravo for all that, yeah, you know, sure. work and effort. Oh, it was really great to see someone really trying to understand and review these things. Yeah. And I think it, it is always a, a challenging area um, for people to do. And I think they've come up with a really robust testing mechanism that's easy to, for the reader to understand. And that testing mechanism reveals plenty about the product. So, mm. um, and, you know, absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, I see that you also get the credit because there's there's been an issue, there's been a kind of issue. The way the wet pixel content management works yeah. is whoever posts the article, it says buy. So when you read the title at the top of the page, it's always the same with my reviews. I'd write a review on for for wet pixel and it always say buy Adam Hanlon underneath because Adam posted it. So yeah, um, yeah, you get the credit as well here. Adam. Well, I get the credit for typing. That's all I get the credit for. Nothing else. Yeah. Um, yeah. I so I just prove I can type. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think I think just to echo what you said, Alex, I, mean, I think it's it's a it's a it's a tour de force. Um, I think it's a, a really really good effort at, at providing a, a a very thorough review. Um, I, I I I obviously haven't done these things. I know how much time it must have taken them. Um, so the web business community really owes them a debt of thanks. I think you know it's yeah. Um, it's, yeah. Um, yeah. And I think it's not just the time in the water. It's that thinking time of how yeah. can we do some tests that people can quickly understand that really reveals something interesting about this equipment mm. and at the same time, um, you know, are actually re repeatable to do and therefore we can really learn something from them and done in as real world conditions as possible. Yeah. Because, you know, particularly, you know, um, and I, I'm, so yeah, really impressed with that. I thought what was really interesting about the, the reviews is, is, first of all, I was really impressed I realize that, you know, for those who've read the review, particularly the last two pages of it, you know, you come to, you know, the conclusion of the review is that the, the Retro Pro, which is actually now being superseded, um, is slight, you know, with a mild upgrade, the Retro Pro X. Um, the Retro Pro gives, you know, is a considerably better performing strobe than the D-Max. But I think the thing I would take from it is actually Scuba Lamp deserve a lot of credit for producing a product as good as the D-Max first time out, yep. which has got some real innovation in it, you know, yep. with that battery, which I know you've drawn attention to before on WetPixel. Yep. And, you know, I have to say that, you know, it's I'm really impressed that they've, they've you know, done a really nice job. Um, I don't, I've never, I, you know, from when I first saw it on um, Facebook, when they promoted it on Facebook, I, I wanted to comment to them about their switches at the time. And I just thought you've probably committed to this already. So I'm not going to write a, a comment saying you should change this yeah. um, on, on their Facebook page. But I um, I think overall, it's a it's a very, very nicely produced product. And yeah. I was really impressed by it. I think so I, although it, it loses out to the Retro and it's probably more expensive than the Retro, I, I was still you know, very impressed by it. I think the uh, I think what was quite interesting, you know, a couple of things. First of all, the, the side by side, it's very hard to tell the screen resolution on a you know, on, on, a, on a computer, but in actual fact, the quality of light that, that the Scuba Max is putting out, um, so it's the, the Scuba, Scuba Lamp is putting out, the D-Max is putting out, is actually 
really quite pleasant. You know, it's really for a first strobe effort, majority of people early on their strobe career tend to produce this strobe that dumps a load of power, but has no kind of quality. It does look like really nice light. So that was the first point. So it's obviously a really good starting point to, to develop from. And the second mm. and the big issue is is they're, they're, the, they're, they're, they're very brave in that they've headed out into what's got to be the future of powering strobes, which is lithium batteries. For strobe power. Now, obviously, there yep. are a bunch of issues around lithium batteries. I, I'm sure anyone in the in in the underwater uh, photography community, underwater imaging community, is aware of these issues. But uh, nevertheless, you know they they are now ubiquitous in just about everything. You know, from the phone that you use probably every day to your laptop computer to everything else and and you know they have so much more efficiency and i think that's very much drawn out in this review i think i think hannes mm -hmm. and, and jacoma have done a good job with this because you know the 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 the, the autonomy the, the longevity of the battery is significantly greater than than you would expect with any of the other existing batteries on the market so mm -hmm. um, you know and that, that that's really something that's very very interesting to and, I, and i'm sure we're going to see um other manufacturers adopting that um, method of powering strobes, um, I, it's inevitable, I think. Um, and mm. we're also going to see um, Scuba Lamp, you know, working on the, the, the various issues. In fact, I, my communication with Scuba Lamp, they have actually sort of got a, a, a version two coming out, which will address some of the issues that have probably been raised. Well, I assume will address all some of the issues that have been, that have been raised in this, in this, in, in the review. So, so yeah. Mm. Great job. Yeah, and I think you know, just just looking through the review, I'm on page four at the moment. If anyone's following along at home, but um, I think the one the, the one area of conclusion I didn't quite agree with the authors on was they comment that they, you know, with the retro they saw, you know, they could see really big differences in how the different accessories modified the light, but with both flashes they kind of underplayed what the diffuser was doing um, mm. in the in the images. And I have to say that for me, I can see quite a big difference between the undiffused and diffused shots, mm. particularly if you look at the bottom of the frames on mm. the sand, the different, you know, the, the diffuser is clearly lighting up a much larger area of the sand. Mm. Um, and I think that, yeah, they comment in the review that um, in both, um, and now I'm not going to find the sentence, is it? Um, that the in fact the diffuser does not appear to increase the beam angle in any meaningful way um for both strobes and i see it in both strobes that it is increasing the beam angle a little bit but i, I do think you know the main i think the point that they perhaps are trying to make is that the diffuser is more about softening the light and improving the quality of the light than really giving you extra coverage yeah. but i would argue that um it does both um yeah. and it, you can see it in the results it, in their results in general, circular flash tubes. You know, I think one of the one of the reasons why why top end strobes tend to have circular flash tubes tend to um, is that they do produce a, a, or tend to produce a softer, more diffuse light almost out the box. So, so I think maybe they're they're you know that that's what they're seeing, and that the adding the diffuser has a less when when you mm -hmm. use when you're used to using T shaped or straight um, um, flash tubes, then I think you know the diffusers make a huge difference, particularly. Mm -hmm. You know, some manufacturers literally go from 90 degrees to 130 degrees, depending on which diffuser you put on. We're not yeah. seeing that type of difference here, are we? No, no, no. I think that's because the diffuser, that they're, yeah, because like you say, the native light is already pretty close to being optimal, yeah. so it just needs a mild diffusion. Yeah. Um, I think you know the thing that a lot of people are going to take as a headline is that the specifications claims on on the scuba lamp are not met in any way by its performance mm. particularly with its its power output is that it's you know got this very incredibly high you know big um power output of 250 watt seconds yeah. compared to the retro's 150 yeah. yet you test them underwater and the retro is wider and brighter yeah. um and i think that that is something that has always been around in underwater photography most of the numbers are attached to flash guns are a, a, a pretend, pretending, you know, the, the Z240 is called 240 for a reason. It's kind of to hint that it might have 240 watt seconds when in fact it's got about 80. Um, and um, I would say that, yeah, I think this, the 240 watt second claim by Scuba Lamp, I think has been rather undone by this because it hasn't got as much power as a, a 150 watt I'm second. Gonna, I'm going to defend it on briefly. And it's a, it's a 24, it's a guide number 24 was the 240 and the 330 okay. is a guide number 33. But yes, 
Um, but for, uh, for years, Icolites were what Icolite yeah. 100, and all. That, and yeah, yeah. basically, I think the manufacturers just tried to find a find an excuse to have a larger number on their flash gun. I think we ha we as consumers need to be aware of you know physics is physics. You can't take a battery of a given size or a given voltage and it suddenly produce a massively greater output. It's not physics is inviolate on this. You know you can't do it. It's not possible. Um, mm. And and so when we see claims like that, we have to be questioning about them i suppose um yeah which is why a review like this is so valuable absolutely. and I, I don't you know i think you're right we shouldn't really climb into the detail of this particular review i'd encourage people to read it mm. um, and to take away the messages that they found from it mm. you know both in terms of the claimed um recycle time and the claimed power output which i think is really interesting that they set out to test it and found both were considerably away from the manufacturer claims. And I think it's something that we have to be really glad that it's, it's making, you know, these wet picks reviews more valuable than ever. Absolutely. Because so much of the content that we see about gear out there to, to read is either created by, we don't have kind of strict influences in underwater photography, but people who are clearly being sent gear and then just repeating the claims of the manufacturer and are not motivated in any way to test them. You know, I've seen lots of posts about this particular product, but plenty of others where people are just repeating saying, well, I've got this new flash gun. It's amazing. 250 watt seconds kicks the ass out of everything else on the market. Oh, recycle time is amazing. And, you know, the first time it's been properly tested, both of those are found to be a long way off the claim levels. Yet the Internet is already full of photographers with nice pictures telling you, that this flash gun has got these amazing specifications. Right. And I think it's, yeah, and I think that's why the role of wet pixel in providing a really you know, objective review is critical. Mm -hmm. And it's also why we as a community, when a really objective review like this comes out, that we should be sharing it around yeah, because it be. helps the rest of our community get access to the proper information rather than the, the stuff that perhaps is, hasn't been tested and people are just repeating you know, on, on faith what they hear. I mean, I, I don't think it's unique to underwater imaging. I think that particularly social yeah. media it is awash with um, claims and counter claims from, from yeah, influences as, as a term that's used, but, you know, um, who, uh, and people that work within, within companies or within yeah, are, are affiliated yeah, with right. companies or whatever else. The yeah. cosmetics world, yeah, the motoring, motoring world, world. Yeah, full of, yeah, full of these, these things. And, and essentially they, their role is, is a marketing role, you know, and their role is basically to say, I've got this product. It's great. Um, and, and that's very different to the role that, that really we as, as consumers of, of underwater photography gear want. We actually want people to turn around and say, well, this works, that doesn't, or this has advantages that this one doesn't, or whatever, the, or, or these are both equally good products. So, you know, those are all very good, yeah. very, very no, good These are good products, yeah. which is why, yeah. you know, they've both clearly got, you know, innovation, got real strengths to them. Yeah. Um, and so I don't really want to make this specifically about these products, but I, I do think that we as a community we need to be, you know, where this line is getting blurred mm. by, you know, because obviously if you're an equipment manufacturer, you want every word on the internet written about your equipment to be super positive. Yep. And you don't want it, everything about my, our equipment is perfect and everyone else's equipment is substandard, yeah. is what you want to be said. And so if you find people who will happily say that for you, um, then then you then you don't see the need of actually having any independent testing yeah. and i think that's where wet pixel is so valuable yeah. because as a community if we want that independent testing we need to be promoting these reviews when they come out and not clicking like on posts which you know are not and, it, and it's the same you know with the, with the dealers as well is that they publish a lot of reviews as well but they're ultimately writing those reviews in order to sell their products which is you know and, you know, I think you need to be very aware of that as a, a consumer yeah. and be very aware that for a lot of dealers, you know, there's a real incentive for them not only just to sell more units, but to sell to specific brands. They might have incentives. And I think, I mean, you know, a story that I'll try and tell with as few references to detail as possible is I know one dealer um, who at that time stocked two different brands and they were both retailing for pretty much the same price. Whereas for one of those brands, they were the importer yeah. and they therefore made 
a huge profit and the other brand, they were just a dealer and they made a relatively small profit. Yeah. And it was better for them that a customer actually bought product A from another shop and they then it was for them to sell product B from their own shop. Yeah. So not only were they trying to persuade you into a particular brand, they actually made more money if you chose the brand they wanted, um, but you even didn't buy it from them. They obviously made even more money if you bought it from them because they made the double profit, but their profit from the dealer, the other dealer, was more than their profit of selling product B. And I think you need to be really aware that that is quite widespread in the market. Yep. And therefore, you need to be pretty careful that, you know, you're getting good advice. And you can read a review like this, go, right, that's the product I want. Go to the dealer and say, this is a product that I feel is right for me. And I want to buy it. The dealer will be really happy to sell it to you. Yep. I think the, the dealers are only, you know, sort of, well, you know, when you're wavering and you don't really know what you want, then, you know, then they start to think that, you know, maybe play up the advantages of one over the other. Sure. I, I mean, I, 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 one of the things that we have to bear in mind, and we're all, well, I think nearly all of us are guilty of this in that we, we probably spend too much time on social media. But social media's primary function is marketing, really. I mean, certainly... <laughs> Our wet pixels role on social media is, and we have a wonderful community in, on the Facebook on the Facebook group. But the, the wet pixels Facebook page, to be blunt, you know, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to drive traffic to wet pixels. That's that's my goal with that page. That's what I'm trying to do with it, which is marketing. You know, it, it is, um, and and that typically is what companies use Facebook for. That's that's what that's what they're out there. That's what we're doing with it. Um, now, obviously, there are exceptions to this, and you know this 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 review is linked onto Facebook, but then it exists in a it's somewhere else because um, it's somewhere that we can provide objective advice um, and and you know we can provide objective reviews. And I, I think we need to be as 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 consumers of of internet information, we need to be critical of of the source of the information as much as we do the information itself. So yeah. Just coming back to the review, I, I do think that there, I do really agree with their conclusion that both of these products are really exciting new additions to to our our our, our genre. Yeah. I think that the the retro you know the retro flash is 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 their clear winner in this particular review, but that doesn't mean that the, the scuba lamp you know is not worthy of consideration. I think that the innovation that they have brought with this battery you know usage making that work in the flash, mating that up to, you know, a really good, you know, quality of light as well. Mm. They've produced a really strong product. And I think there's a lot particularly in that that I think is going to become, as you were saying earlier, the future. And I think that, that you know, that's that makes this a really important and exciting product as a first step down that route. Um, and, I, and I also think that we're, we're in a quite a unique position in that, um, obviously, um, this review deals with two strobes, but there's actually... A group of other strobes that are similar performance levels. I mean, obviously there'll be variations within this um, mm. that are, are right. So we're suddenly in a unique position where actually, when we're looking at kind of top end strobes, um, we've suddenly got a lot of choice, and, and that's mm. that's a fantastic. You know, for a long time there's been so limited choice at, in the top end strobe area, and suddenly we've got a bunch of options, all with pros and cons. You know, and and and, and will undoubtedly be the subject of reviews in future. Um, mm. the, the, and that, that's a really for us as as underwater photographers. You know, we can. Literally go out there and you know and, and probably pick from four or five maybe more strobes now that are all kind of aimed at this place and that's a that's a you know that's an incredibly healthy thing for us. All we need now is to be able to go to Blue Water and go and use the things. But <laughs> fortunately, mm. uh, Hannes and Giacomo are, are in the right place. You know they they're, they're living in Blue Water, so ideal. But but I mean you know absolutely it's a it's a, it's a great mm. place to be. Um, yeah, I think it's important to make the point that all of these strobes in this family are massively moving the game on from, you know, real yeah. old popular flash guns like Z240s, like um, D1s and D2s. You know, this, these, are, these are a big step up in, in capability. Mm. And that's really exciting for underwater photographers. So, mm. yeah, it's great to see this innovation. Mm. And because there's a lot of innovation in this area of underwater photography, it's also an area that needs these detailed reviews because we are seeing technology and we're seeing jumps in technology Perhaps which, you know, in maybe housing design, we're not seeing because the products have been very good, really, yeah. for much of the last five, five, five or plus years. Yeah. And so there's less interest in innovation because it's, yep, there's a new housing for a new camera and it works as well as the old housing for the old camera. 
Yeah. Um, whereas I think in this area, it's the area where we really have something interesting to examine and understand. Absolutely. Yeah, quite agree. Um, on, on the subject of reviews briefly, um, obviously, um, WetPixel would welcome submissions for reviews from anybody. So if you have an idea for a review or you have a product that you feel is, is something that you'd like to review, you know, it's very much an open door policy. Obviously, we you know, I, I'm the editor, so 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 I, I would be wrong to say I necessarily accept all submissions because some of them may be not relevant to, to the WebPixel audience. But certainly if you have an idea for a review, please feel free to reach out. Um, or you can contact me via the WebPixel or via Facebook or other thousands of different ways that we can now be contacted by. Um, and, and also to state, you know, Alex has a, I mean, I, and this is a debt of gratitude that the WebPixel community owes to Alex as well, because over the years, Alex has produced, I don't know, how many? 20, oh, no 30, idea. 100, <laughs> a lot of reviews. Yeah, somewhere, I would say more than yeah, 30, less than 100. 30, yeah, so, so, you know, a lot of reviews where he's gone out and shared his time and information with the web community. Um, you know, um, he doesn't get paid for it. Um, not anybody and, and else. Access to new gear before anyone else. You, you do get to play with toys, yeah. But but so so you know um you know it's a process that we 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 plan to continue. Um, we've had a bit of a lull on it certainly I think because of the the, the COVID and people not travelling. But you know please feel free to reach out. This is one of the things that that we as a community can do, um that possibly other avenues can't do. So so thank you very much. Um, thank you again, Alex. Um, I shall look forward to seeing you again soon. Um, and I would like to thank our sponsor, um, Aquatica, for sponsoring this episode. We can't make these without their support, so thank you very much to them. Um, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please feel free to add comments, suggestions in the comments box, and drop us a like if you enjoyed it. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon.